For anything to get good at something, it has to reference and copy something. Um, and AI is already great at mimicking uh, paintings, illustrations, um, marketing plans, strategies. It mimics, um, but it also creates. I've heard amazing um, creations that AI has made of music that sounds like something that I would have written, that sounds like me. Um, and some people would be convinced that I did it, <clears throat> that I sung it. Um, and it wasn't a recreation of something. It was something from scratch. Um, and it will continue to get better. How do I feel about that? I feel that regulations need to be put in place around essence and likeness ASAP. I urge every person that's working in the AI space, every person that works in you know, governance and regulation and setting um, protection protocols for people and humanity, essence and likeness is important. And then we're gonna look back at this time on the folks that are working in AI that if they didn't wave the flag, hey, this is where we should be doing, fighting for people's likeness, people's essence, protecting people and their civil liberties and their communities, that is what we should be doing. We're not saying regulations to stop innovation. We're saying, I'm saying regulations for people. Do you think it's a bit premature the way in which we are adopting artificial intelligence already before there is an actual regulation put in place that we can follow? That's hard to say. That's hard to say. That's like saying when, when the automobile was invented, was the DMV around? Fact is, no. Uh, that's like saying when the airplane was invented, the FAA was already around. Answer is no. Um, but now that there's flight, now that there's vehicles on the road, I think it's time for the, for the Department of Motor Vehicles and the FAA to ensure people are safe in the communities that they live in. I would like us to touch down on FYI. Maybe, Will, you can tell me what is it about and how is it different to other language models like ChatGPT <clears throat> or BART? FYI is a, a messenger first. It's a messenger with your file management, your digital asset management, um, storage um, connected to the messenger. Because why should your conversations um, around your digital assets, the projects that you're working on, be separate from where your teams and your um, communication plan strategy are. So it's a messenger, digital asset management, file storage. It's a calendar, um, a music a organizer, uh, a, a gen generative AI for team flow. It's a messenger from the perspective of project based collaboration, project-based, you know, um, ideation, materialization uh, with AI to help you. Uh, who do you think or who do you expect will be using uh, AI? So the creative community are working across six different tools up until a, uh, FYI.AI existed. We were on WhatsApp. To work off WhatsApp, you need a Dropbox. Um, if your files are too big, you need a WeTransfer. But if you can't um, open it on the, on WhatsApp, you need to send that we transfer to email, so you need email, um, you need calendar, and you need Zoom, and then a chat GPT. So you need seven things for creatives to get work done remotely on a phone. On FYI, you just need one tool called FYI. And so the, the key ideal customer is the hyper creative, the person that is ideating, putting teams together, or small teams, and with AI, small teams become big teams. First, we're starting with basic NDA, idea protection, IP protection, um, and then we'll, we'll grow from there. FYI right now, let's call it uh, FYI 1.0. 3.0, 4.0 is amazing. FYI right now for a messenger is beyond any traditional messenger currently. Um, and by 2.0, 3.0, we will be light years, and we, we invite the creative community to be on the journey with us, the whole premise of the product, is to champion the creative, support them, protect them and their IP and their data by issuing elliptical curve cryptography keys that we worked with IBM um, to ensure that everything is protected soup to nuts. I could tell you about the work that we're doing with IBM 
as far as the, uh, the, the business of creativity. Uh, right now, if you're a creative and you have an idea that you want to start, but you want to protect that idea before you go reach out to folks, right now, that's kind of impossible if you're from some inner city or some, from some rural area or living in the suburbs and don't have access to a, an attorney to create an NDA for you, to protect your idea. And so on FYI, in collaboration with IBM and Watson X, in the near future, you're gonna be able to create a thread, uh, evoke um, uh, 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 your FYI business agent to create an NDA, protect your, your, your idea, um, uh, start a company and build um, ideas from ideation and materialization without having to worry about um, how do you find an attorney or afford an attorney to do the basic thing that is protect and do business while you create. And I was wondering if you were concerned in general and then specifically for FYI mm. um, about the bias. Yeah, so the only way to tackle bias is to have people from different communities, um, different backgrounds, training data and writing algorithms. And I've been super passionate about this subject for the past decade plus. That's why I have a school and a program in East Los Angeles, Boyle Heights, where there's todo Mexicanos in Milario, and we teach them computer science, robotics, and, and, and um, programming. So they can grow up and fill jobs that are needed, um, address data biases and algorithmic biases. I, that is my core passion. But you can protest, you can go out and, 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 and ensure that companies address these biases, or you could go out there and you could do work and adopt a school and encourage kids to go down this path. And to the folks that are, that are working in the space, it's not that it's, they're malicious and they don't want people of color to train models. It's set up from the school systems and the zoning from the get-go. Because there's not a computer science program in every school, but there's a basketball program or a football program or a soccer program in every school, but no engineering or algorithmic programming or data training program mandatory in every school, inner city, rural area, right? poverty stricken area, underdeveloped community, underserved community. Is it the folks that made the model where they're like, oh, ha, 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 we're not going to, we don't want? No, and that's not the case. Because there is engineering gaps. The world needs more engineers. Where are the engineers going to come from? Now there's engineering for engineering. Now there's an algorithm that can engineer for us. But that still doesn't address the data bias. That still doesn't address the algorithmic bias. So the only true way, like I said, is to have people of color, black and brown, and women, and trans, and gay, and LGBTQ+, training models, writing algorithms. It's the only way. I started 12 years ago with 65 kids. Now we serve 14,000 students in LA. I put STEM programs in inner cities. That sounds like something to do. Why? Because they're not doing it. And when you don't have STEM programs in inner cities, you have data bias, algorithmic bias. Are you concerned about a future in which machines will be doing all the creative and fun works and then humans will just be prompting machines? No because I believe in humanity's creativity, spontaneity, curiosity, and competitiveness. I believe in that. Just like calculators outcalculate mathematicians, that doesn't mean people aren't doing calculations. That's not, that doesn't mean people aren't building structures and you know, working with advanced mathematical models. People are still thinking. People are still trying to solve problems. It's just a massive, it's an amazing tool. But that's not going to stop our innovative spirit, our ingenuity, inventions. Right now in popular culture, the word is innovation. Invention hasn't been said or talked about in a long time. This new renaissance is going to spark new inventions, not innovations. This next leap is like we're going to invent things, not just innovate.